Hey guys, what's up? And thank you for clicking on the video. And welcome to the part eight tutorial in your After Effects training. And guys, in today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at some of the power shortcuts. Or basically, I'm gonna show you guys some tips and techniques that will really help you, uh, you know, increase your efficiency and increase your speed when you are doing some After Effects work or you are working in some of your projects when uh, you know using After Effects. All right. So let's get started. All right, guys. Um, starting from the very beginning, people, I, I would like to explain the difference between the open command and the import command. Okay. Now, the very important thing, okay, uh, that uh, that I insist or uh, basically, you know, advise uh, my students to use is the import command. The reason being, people, that uh, you know, you you have the ability to work with multiple compositions. Okay. Now, if I go to the file menu and if I do open a project, okay, it will it will give me a dialog box. Okay, and uh, I can just go and I can select a project. Click open and it will be opened. Okay, uh, I'll get my timeline and I'll get everything. Okay, um, but have been uh, watching my previous videos okay or if you have been following my tutorial series the best way that i uh, think is for importing anything in adobe after effects is going to the project panel doing a double click in the blank space or this gray area all right that dark gray area and it's going to open this dialog box which says import file so now guys you can go ahead and you can select your multiple projects your multiple aeb files that is after effects projects and i'm going to go and i'm going to open the v2 and the alt title project all right actually i'm going to uh, i'm going to you know deselect the untitled project and i'm going to go to this project all right the 0123 by uh, dot 11 and once i click okay what do you notice people that uh, you know adobe after effects has gone and it has imported these your two projects all right as folders uh, that's a really good thing because you know what happens is you know you may have lots of video files you may have some sequences you may have some still images uh, you know in a project so you know that that, that would really make your project panel uh, you know real messy you know and not so organized if you know everything was to be imported directly so i, I would say that the folders are really good and you can just click on this disclosure triangle to, to see what is inside, you know, the folders. And uh, what you have to do is, people, you need to find your composition file, okay? Now, as you can see, I've, I've saved my, the 0123 by 11, uh, 23 .11 AEP file. I have saved my different compositions in the etc uh, folder, you know, which was inside this folder. So, I, I can just, just, just do a double click in the composition, and you'll see that the composition gets loaded on its own in the composition or in the timeline. Similarly, guys, if you double click on the other composition, it's gonna go and it's gonna do a multiple open of the compositions, right? I'm gonna, you know, close my this folder. I'm gonna come to the V2 AEP. I'm gonna open it and I'm just gonna find the composition file again. And guys, if you are having trouble finding the composition file, okay, in your project, what you can do is, people, you can just reduce the size of this name, all right? Uh, you, can, you can just keep your mouse on the very ending, okay, of the name, and you'll see that the mouse pointer changes. Click on it and drag it to the uh, to the left and that's going to reveal your type okay your, your type menu and guys uh, the, the, the type menu is really, really important because it can help you identify a file okay now if you see that this is a flv file so it is showing me as, as in my type menu it is showing me flash video uh, it's an mp4 file so it's showing me quick time quick time quick time it's a bmp file sequence so it is showing me bmp file sequence it if it's a folder it'll show you folder and similarly guys if you have a composition in your project it's going to show you the composition so you can easily identify your composition file all right and just do a double click on the composition file and that's gonna input it automatically into the timeline all right so uh, that, that's a very important thing that i think beginners should be knowing so that you know once you are working with your projects uh, you know you may have some really you know a good hand uh, you know on your project and you can you know really work faster you know with your projects all right so so just, so that's a tip all right from me and i'm gonna go ahead and close these all these multiple uh, you know compositions and I want to keep only one composition. Now I'm going to increase the, uh, the size of my timeline just a little bit so you guys can see all the layers that are there in my composition. All right, now as you see guys, I was working with, and actually guys, this was supposed to be a, uh, uh, you know, um, a dynamic link, okay, which I created using the Premiere Pro uh, software from Adobe company and After Effects for adding some really nice effects and timing in this project. Now, I, I was actually making a Naruto, uh, you know, AMV. And therefore, I used After Effects for doing that, you know, for putting some effects and all. So, uh, you know, I, I ended up having lots of layers, okay, and, uh, you know, all of these were video files. So, you know, what do you do, people, for compressing, you know, all these layers? Because, you know, uh, if you have seen my other videos, when you want to change some layer properties, or if you want to, uh, you know, toggle uh, the, your keyframes, uh, you know, you have to open the disclosure triangle a lot, and, right, and you can, you know, you have to go in different things. Like, if you're having a mask on your layer, you need to open that, and if you want to make some changes in it, you further need to go down under the mask one, or, or you know, if you have some multiple masks, you'll be having mask two, or if you are having, like, lots of effects, 
you may have like kalama, um, the lens flare, uh, you know, etc. Uh, the Gaussian blur, so something like that, you know. Then you can, and, and you know, if, if you want to put on some really good timing, all right, uh, you, you may want to go in the transform menu. So basically, guys, what, what, will, what will happen is, uh, you may, you know, really end up having, you know, a long thing, a long list, you know, of layers in your timeline. So here are some of the tips, okay, or techniques that will help you organize or keep your timeline clean and, you know, totally, you know, layers free so you can properly work with a particular layer, all right? Now, some of these things are really common, but, you know, just for explaining purposes, I'm going to start from the very beginning, right? Now, yeah, I think I've probably covered this thing, but, you know, since it's a tips and techniques tutorial, I I'm going to show you anyways. Uh, if you want to hide a layer, as in you want to uh, remove the visibility of the layer from the program monitor, just remove this eyeball, okay, icon, which is right over here, on the extreme left-hand side, okay, or in the timeline panel. There are going to be lots of eyeballs, okay? One eyeball for every um, layer. If you remove the eyeball icon, you'll notice that the, that the, um, like if you see over here, you can see that, that the visibility of this, uh, of this layer has just now gone. If I put the eyeball again, you'll see that the visibility comes back, you know. So that, that's a good thing. Uh, the next thing, guys, is supposed to be of this audio. Uh, this basically will only be available if you have uh, an audio attached uh, in your video, all right? If you don't have an audio, you cannot dim, all right, or, or cannot remove uh, the visibility of the audio. The next thing, people, is supposed to be this one dot, okay? And if you keep your mouse on it, you'll see that it says solo, or basically hides all non-solo non, -so uh, non -solo videos. Now, what this means, people, and according to me, people, this solo layer, or this solo, you know, command is very, very important, and you know, it, it really gives you, uh, you know, a very important, uh, basically, it gives you, like, a good hand, you know, a good control on your layer, like, if you want, if you are, want, uh, like, if you are adding some color changes, or if you're applying some really good effects to some of your layers, you may really want to use a solo icon, all right? Like, for example, if I want to solo, okay, or basically, if I want to solo, you know, or see only this layer, if I put a check, okay, on this solo icon, you will see that, like, in my timeline, I cannot see anything else, okay? All my layers are still there, uh, in my timeline, they are still there, but only the visibility has been removed from everything, and now, guys, I can only see this layer, okay, on which I have put the solo dot. Now, the, you know, the really important thing about this is when you are creating some, like, like say intro titles for yourself, all right? When you're creating them, guys, you know, if you want to work on a particular text or if you want to uh, work on a particular thing, all right, or a particular effect, if you want to combine the effect and, and you know, or if you want to see that, you know, that how do these two layers look? Because what I can do is I can actually have multiple solo layers. Like say if I want to see what is going be below this thing, all right? If I put a solo to it, guys, you'll see that, wait a sec, you'll see that this layer is also there, okay? So basically I, I can have lots of layers like this, like say if I try to bring it over here and I try to, you know, solo this one also, you'll see that only these two layers are properly available to me now. And since this is on multiply, it's on linear burn, if I just change the format, uh, nothing can be visible right now because they are actually, you know, oh yeah, actually because it is over here. If I bring this thing over here, now you'll see that the, how the color changed because, you know, I'm going to change it back to lighten so you can see. Ah, guys, seriously. Alright, but, but anyways, guys, I hope you get the point, right? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna unsolo this and I'm gonna do some few undos, so, you know, all my changes that I've done, you know, just go back. Uh, the next thing, people, is supposed to be the shy, alright? It's supposed to be a command, basically, which hides all your layers from your timeline, okay? It doesn't delete them, but it hides them, alright? Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna increase the size of my timeline once again, so you guys can see all my layers. I'm gonna reduce, uh, reduce the size of my program monitor using my scroll wheel on my mouse. And, um, guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unsolo these layers, which I just soloed them, right? And, yeah. Uh, the, the shy icon, people, is supposed to be this one, right? Which says, which it basically looks like, you know, some kind of uh, animal, you know, or some kind of a person peeking out, you know, like, you know, on top of a wall, right, and peeking through that wall. Now, if you click on it, people, all right, what, what you can do is you are going to activate this solo, uh, you know, uh, this, I'm sorry, guys, you're going to activate the shy layer, all right, or this, you're going to actually activate the, the shy switch. And what you can then do is, people, you can actually shy these layers by using a button over here, which is there in the timeline. There's going to be a small button right over here, okay? I think you may want to zoom in, uh, as in, uh, full screen the video, because you may not be, you, you know, you won't be able to see if you don't, you know, full, full screen the video. Uh, there's going to be a small icon right over here, you know, where my, where my mouse pointer is. If I click on that icon, guys, you can see that my, like, you know, that, that layer just, you know, basically disappears. And if you're wondering that where have all these layers gone, okay? They are, they are still there, okay, guys? They, I, I, I can see, guys, even I'm scrubbing my time indicator, my CTI, right? You can see that there is changes happening in the program monitor. Meaning that all my layers, all right, they are still there. But, you know, I, I cannot see them into the timeline. Why is, why is that happening? That is happening because I have set this, the shy switch on. If I click on the shy button once again, you'll see all my layers come back. 
Now, this kind of a technique, guys, is really, really important when you are doing animation in Adobe After Effects. You know, when you have like lots of layers, like you know, some 30, 40, 50, 60 layers, right? When you are really working on some animation. So that time, guys, you may, you know, really want to use a shy technique, you know, for hiding some of your layers. For example, if I want to just work on this layer, right? And it's like, you know, that, that I really have to go into the layer properties of this layer, and then I need to open masks, and, you know, I need to open multiple effects, all right, and make some changes. I can just remove the, uh, the, the, the shy switch from this layer, and when I click on my shy button, okay, which activates the shy, uh, you know, command, when I click on it, you'll see that all my rest of my layers are gone now, and I'm left with only this, you know, basically giving me a lot of space in my timeline. So when I open the layer, I can go under the mask, make some changes in it. I can make some changes in the transform button, all right, or this transform command. I can make some changes in the FX as I like and you know stuff like that. So so the shy switch, the system of the solo and I will like in tips over here. The open and the import command and I think yeah, the last thing people that I would really want to teach you people is about um pre composing uh, you know or having a composition in your timeline. Now if you can, if you guys are wondering how can that be possible <laughs> Let me show it to you, alright. And now this kind of trick, people, is really, really used by the animation users, okay, of Adobe After Effects. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, you know, just increase the the timeline once again, so you guys can see the layers, alright. Once again, I'm gonna select the first layer. I'm gonna hold down my my Shift key. I'm gonna select the, and I'm gonna click on this last one, uh, layer, okay. That basically selects everything in the middle. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go to my layer pro, uh, my layer menu, and in the end, guys, in the end, okay, it's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be a command. The, uh, the, the shortcut could be Control Shift C. It's called Pre Compose. When you click on it, guys, you know it's gonna ask you the new composition name, and I'm just gonna name it say V2 slash dash uh, like dash Pre, and click OK, guys. And you can see that every of my like you know all my layers have been compressed into this one layer. Now, if if you take a look at the icon of this layer, it is similar to the composition I, I, I can we have in the project panel. So that means guys that we are actually having a composition file in our um, in our timeline. Now, now the really important use of this is, you know, when you are having like some 50, 60, you know, layers, like, and, and the reason I'm teaching you this is, you know, like if you are working on some intro titles, I'm sorry about this, like if you're working on some intro titles, okay, and you, you know, you, you're really making a big intro, like say 30, 40 seconds or a one minute intro, you know, like something really, really big, in which you have lots of things, okay, so you can actually use this thing saying that, that, that like the first phase is clear or the first five seconds is done, right, you have like made all the changes in it, all right, uh, so, so you can just pre-compose them and make it into one layer. Then you can, you can just, uh, you know, work on the rest of the five seconds or the, uh, or the another set of five seconds. And then you can again go ahead and you can pre-compose them and name it the second phase of your intro. And similarly guys, the third, fourth and, you know, so on guys. Alright. And, you know, the really important thing now you have to understand guys that if you apply some effects, say if I go to my blur and sharpen and I'm going to go for my the Gaussian blur. If I take an effect and if I apply it to this thing, it is going to apply, it's going to get applied to the whole thing, okay? So like I, so like you can see guys, I have applied the Gaussian Blur now, right? And if I scrub my timeline through my project, you'll see that the Gaussian Blur has been applied to all the layers which were there inside this, you know, inside this pre-composition. And just in case people, okay, you feel that, okay, there are some changes that I still need to make, okay? I'm going to delete my, this effect which I applied. And if you just feel that, you know, that if you, like if you have merged on something, and if you want to, you know, go back to the layers, which were there, you know, in this pre-composition, hold on the shift key, guys, alright? I, I, I'm sorry, guys, just do a double click on this, you know, pre-composition, and you'll see that it goes and it opens in another composition, alright, in this new tab, and you'll see that you have all your uh, layers still in, you know, properly. Now you can go and you can apply, uh, you know, effects to them, you know, so, and they will not be applied to all the layers, alright? So I can just go, I can you know, increase the blurriness only of this layer, so only this layer gets blurred, and all my other layers are still, you know, proper, alright? So, uh, use these techniques, alright, when you are working in your project, alright guys, and hope you guys like this tutorial. If you did, please subscribe me guys, and uh, like my video, and share it on your Facebook, or, or you know, share it on your social networking sites, and thank you for watching my video guys, please subscribe, alright? Thank you.